Jerk offs, we are back. I'm back. And I think I'm the jerk off this week. I'm sorry, this thing is coming out a bit late. I've been busy uh, for the last fortnight. I've been going around continental Europe, the one that you guys decided to leave because it's weird and they speak different languages. You got out, you Brexited, or you're trying to Brexit. That's where I've been. I did a couple of gigs in Estonia which I found out is a country that has free Wi-Fi throughout the whole country uh, and also the highest rate of models per capita in the world. It's a new little startup thing. Uh, a lot of companies go there. A lot of startups go there to, to set themselves up for tax break purposes. And I did a couple of comedy shows. There were some expats in there, which was nice. Felt, felt right at home. There was a gigantic Australian man called Travis. He was literally like 6'6", six, six, probably like 120 kgs, big boy. Uh, he found me very exciting. And then at a bar, he would cheers my glass over and over again until it actually broke. And then beer went everywhere. And he said, mate, you're going to finish it. And I'm like, well, what? And he's like, mate, you're going to finish your beer. Like, honestly, go on, mate. You don't want to waste it. And then I drank beer from a glass that was half shattered because I didn't want a fellow Australian to think I was a pussy. It's nice to be home. That is about as Australian an experience as you can get. Uh, but that was fun, doing things there. It's weird, the stuff they don't have in other countries that you don't realize until you're midway through a joke. Like, guess who? They had no concept of guess who in Estonia. I don't know if that's like a Soviet thing, where it's like you don't want people to practice profiling, but they didn't know guess who. They didn't know Pizza Hut which I thought was a little bit strange because I thought Pizza Hut was honestly everywhere. Uh, but no Pizza Hut, no Domino's. They get their pizzas boutique. But in fairness, by the look of them, they seemed just as bad as Pizza Hut pizzas. And then this week, I've been in the Netherlands, uh, a country famed for stand-up comedy audiences being incredibly difficult. Uh, I've had a 50-50 run at that so far in Eindhoven. They were lovely, great crowd. And then in Amsterdam, they all looked at me like I was trying to explain something to them uh, and they really weren't on board with any of it, which was weird. But then I saw the rest of the show and I don't think they were bored with anything. So I, I, was, I was right there in the thick of it with everybody else. Uh, I got a couple more shows, uh, one more tonight in Amsterdam and three in The Hague tomorrow. That's right. Three shows back to back in The Hague. I don't, even, I don't even know what's in The Hague. I think in my head, it's like a significant European political place, but I could be completely wrong. I might just be thinking that because its name is preceded by the word the, which implies some level of importance. Um, but yeah, going around, the, going around the Netherlands has been pretty cool. Uh, it's snowing here. I don't know. I don't get the snow thing. I think a lot of Australians get very excited by snow. They're like, holy shit, what a crazy phenomenon. But uh, I, I'm pretty nonplussed, I guess. Like, it's fine. Like, I don't get excited by it. My girlfriend goes crazy. She's like, oh, my God, I got to take a photo. She throws snowballs at me. That's, like, her favorite thing. She just picks up a random piece of snow and chucks it at me. I got a waterproof jacket, so it's fine. But, you know, it seems to bring her an immense amount of joy. I don't, I don't really know why. Like, maybe it's because, like, you know, dudes get to ejaculate. We don't need the snowball thing. But, hey... Uh, if it makes her happy, I'm more than happy to cop a snowball every now and again. Uh, other than that, the one thing that I found weird is like with the snow in the Netherlands, they get the snow off the bike lane, but in the bit where the people walk, there's just as much snow as you like, no salt or anything like that, which means this country actually values bikes more than people. I thought that was kind of a stereotype, but absolutely not. If you're on a bike, you've got a free and clear road to ride down. If you're a pedestrian, you're treated like scum. And you go there with the snow and the little bike people smugly look at you as they ride no-handed down the street. I'm still incredibly impressed, i got to say, by anyone who can ride a bike hands-free. I'm 29. I can't do it. I can't fathom having the balls to just let go of the handlebars. I don't know how you develop that skill. And honestly, I'm just straight up impressed by it every time I see it happen. And the other thing in Amsterdam, they have scooters in the bike lane. Like your little like your moped is in the bike lane. Which seems weird. I, I, th I think that's like, in my head, that's definitely grouped with a car, not grouped with a bike. But everyone everyone seems fine with it. I don't agree with it though. 
I got to say, like, the more I come to these European countries, I realize how, like, kind of westernized I am, you know? Like, I'm, I'm like, America, Australia, UK. Like, that's, that's how my mindset works. That's where things make sense to me. Because, like, yeah, in the Netherlands, like, like grown men will drink milk with, with their lunch. I saw that yesterday. It was fucking wild. It's just like, yeah, I'm going to have a milk. And and nobody nobody questioned it. Nobody nobody was concerned. Nobody made fun of them. They just got their milk and they ate it, ate their lunch and drank their milk like like really really tall children, because they're Dutch and they are fucking tall. Um, anyway, I'm sorry the episode is late. Uh, I have been busy, but what I wanted to give you is a little a little snippet, a little Friday night uh, weekend bit of bit of bit of history. Because I don't know how long you've been listening to this thing, but initially the podcast was supposed to be between me and Piano Veli, uh, who is a South African who grew up in the Isle of Man and now lives in the UK. Uh, the first episode is with him. It's a great episode. Check that out if you like. But we did actually record a second episode that I did not release because I was like, hey, you know, I don't want to. I don't want to dwell on the past. He can't do the podcast anymore. I'll host. I'll get guests in. But Today, I thought because we're a little bit behind, I just wanted to give you something to enjoy. And this episode is Piano Velli talking about class. That's right. It's been covered in the podcast a fair bit because in the UK, you can't help but talk about class. And this is Pierre breaking it down to me, uh, recorded in June, I think you'll realize because we mentioned the World Cup as a thing that's upcoming. Who knew that England would have such a good time when we talked about it? Uh, but yeah, he explains class to me because class in the UK, um, being posh is an entirely different thing to what I figured it would be as an Australian. Uh, it has nothing to do with money. And anyway, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let Pierre explain it because he does a better job than I ever could. Um, thank you so much for listening to the podcast. I'll be back on Monday with a fresh episode. Uh the Union Jack Off, you jerk offs. So I appreciate you every single week. Please do like the Facebook page. Get in touch with me if you want to recommend a guest or if you have any questions to cover. Muggleton Daniel at gmail.com. Uh, you can get in touch there or get at me on Twitter or Instagram at Dan Muggleton. I promise to reply to anything you ever ask me. All right, guys, here he is, my good mates, my mates, the king. Well, he's not the king, but goddamn, he knows a lot. Ladies and gentlemen, Pierre Novelli. As, but well, but, but well, you can't be you can't be upper class in the UK just with money or education. Well, that's the thing that I wanted to yeah, talk about. That's like an interesting yeah. cuz in in Australia like it's mainly a tax bracket thing. Same like in si- can, same in South Africa. You can totally buy your way in. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah, it's like, like a buyer's market essentially. <laughs> being 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 posh is a buyer's market. Yeah. Well, like you say uh, so a good example is like Wayne Rooney. Yeah. Is obviously enormously rich. We like talking about Wayne Rooney. He yeah. got a, he got to run last week, he got to run this week. That's right. Wayne Rooney is the example of everything in bright English. red head. <laughs> uh, Wayne Rooney is very rich, but he's not posh. Yeah. He's, he'll never be upper class. Well, that, I think that's the funniest thing. Like in Australia, you'd never say someone's like posh. Yeah. You'd say they're rich. Yeah. And that implies that they are a wanker, which in yeah. the same way that posh implies you're a wanker. Whereas yeah. here, totally different concepts. Mm-hmm. Like I remember I had family friends who like own a house in Norfolk and it's mm. kind of been in the family for a long time. And they were telling me that like a family had bought a house down the road and I think they, they weren't like English in terms of like their background at least wasn't English. Yeah. And they will be like, yeah, they own the house, but they'll never be a part of the community in the way that we're a part of the community. Yeah. And I was like, what do you mean? Like never, like how many years tenure yeah. do you have to have yeah. to like break into this mad club? Yeah. That's a big thing. Yeah. But like, but like posh is like, cause the UK has an official class system as much as it likes to pretend it doesn't. Because there is a monarchy. Yeah. And there is, there is an aristocracy. Right. Mo- you know, like Oxford Street, like most of the, that sort of shopping area, central London. Yeah, yeah, Oxford Street, very, very busy street. That's all owned, Horrible place. That's all owned by the Duke of Westminster. What, like all the buildings? He like rents them? All the land. The Duke of Westminster is, I think, 29. And he is worth 30 billion? 
30 million. He's one of the richest landowners on earth. Yeah, yeah. What? Yeah. But I, how come I've never seen that like on any of the lists of like rich people? Because <laughs> it's just like in assets of land rather than oh. slush or whatever. Or, what? He's worth a quadrillion schmishmillion. Like he's, he's, un, he's richer than God, you know. Right. And who's the Duke of Westminster? Some guy. He, his dad died. Just uh, some bro. His dad died of a heart attack. And then at the age of like 27, he became the next Duke of Westminster. And oh. suddenly was worth, you know, 30 billion. That'd be pretty sick though. Yeah, but uh, like they... Uh, He's it's so big, like the estates and the amount of land and stuff that has to be managed that he can't even afford to try and take an active interest in it. He just has to use the endless amounts of money he has to pay endless amounts of people to manage the endless amounts of money he has. Wow. Yeah. So, so like, like we're talking about a country where a duke is rich. Yeah, that's pretty insane. Loads of people uh, who want to come across better in the UK say things to you like, uh, and because I grew up here, I believed it as well. Like, oh, class doesn't matter anymore. And you go, yeah, well, depends. But loads of aristocrats are also very poor because they have this enormous stately home, right? Like a big mansion, like, like fucking Downton Abbey. Downton Abbey, good reference. My girlfriend loves it. But there's like property taxes and da, da, da. And if you're an aristocrat, you get raised, like, yeah, you get sent to a fancy private school, but your whole job is just to manage the land. It's like, how are the pheasants doing, you know? And you gotta, you got to buy the pheasants. I know that. Pheasants don't occur naturally That's anymore. It. you got to ship them in. But you can't, like, you can't then abandon this enormous estate and this, let's be honest, 300-year-old, decaying, uninsulated, badly plumbed Can you building. sell it? Well, that's the thing. I went to university with a guy who, and posh people in England, really posh people are, like, secret. They secret wear, they wear jumpers with holes in and they smoke rollies and stuff like know? skull and bones no 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 no. like they don't want anyone to know how fancy they are if someone's right. going around in chinos with a fucking signet ring he's upper middle class what's that thing like the emperor's new clothes or something like is that a movie emperor's new groove is the Disney Emperor's movie. new groove <laughs> <laughs> sorry that was of the way off so like yeah so like when when i was at cambridge and everyone goes oh, it's all full of fancy people and you yeah it is but the quiet kid who doesn't even go out drinking, who sits in a sort of like crappy like jumper and no fashion sense and doesn't even drink that much. Yeah. That guy is a duke. That's the that's the rich guy. Yeah. He's just playing it cool. Or even if he's not rich, he's posh. Right. Remember, not about Again, money. Again, not, not money. Duke. Got it. This is tough to Whereas handle. Whereas the guy with like perfectly gelled hair and like a boating blazer who's dressed as like the bad guy from an American college movie. Oh, they're so... They do dress like that. I've been to Cambridge. Yeah. yeah they actually dress like that and sit on the lawn, but they've yeah, got yeah. the wrong accent. You're like, yes. why aren't you throwing an American football? Why aren't you saying you'll never get out of Yale now? <laughs> Nobody uh, even knows who you are. Like, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah. So those guys are upper middle class. Right. So yeah. upper middle class are the ones that kind of... never aristocrats. The upper middle class people like wear it, like they're kind of like on the, yeah. you know, heart, like on the sleeve, like the wealth on the sleeve, like yeah. kind of badge of honor. Yeah. But like the really like posh people are just like... Uh, um, unless, unless, well, there's, that was at Cambridge. I mean, apparently the places like Durham or St. Andrews University where the really posh people also go, they, they sometimes will go around in tweed and whatever. But so this, this guy, this quiet guy who didn't mm. seem fancy at all, who turned out to be super, super fancy. Like his family's like a thousand years old history. Like, right. They rent out the stately home to the National Trust as a museum, as a, as a tourist thing. And they live in the wing of the house that's closed and it rotates. The wing, like where they live, rotates around the house. Not literally. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that would be sick. Just I like mean, a, ro that, a rotating stately very home. Very expensive to install. Yeah. We've actually, we've actually got an outback steakhouse in the upper level. <laughs> it spins so you can see the estate. There's yeah. a roller derby. <laughs> um, yeah. So they, they would live in the fucking East Wing or whatever. And the rest of it would be open to tourists under the National Trust. And, and they'd look at the paintings. And, and that's how they make their money. Or yeah. like yeah, maintain the ownership of the house, I guess. Uh, yeah. It's like long-term rent. So like the rental agreement would be like hundreds of years. That's Oh, man. It's so, so they actually don't really have much income. But they are super asset rich and super posh. And all have titles and crests and shields and. But it's like the posh people just have regular person jobs. Like it's quite rare. They normally do something quite eccentric. Sometimes their job is just to manage their mad amount of land. Well, yeah, I get that one. But those ever farmers, just, they're ever, like farmers. A lot of them. Ever just like high powered lawyer, high powered businessman. Sometimes, sometimes, but, but rarely. Like it's not. Yeah, because it's a lot of effort. <laughs> right. And it's like it's hard enough to be a high powered businessman. Without having all this other stuff, uh, not but having, it does happen. Not having all this goddamn land to manage. Yeah, I, guys, I'm just trying to close a deal over here. Can someone else manage the land today? Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, and because uh -huh. I'm a real dweeb, I looked up. Um, have you ever heard of the Habsburgs? I've never heard of the Habsburgs. So the Habsburg dynasty was in charge of the entire Austro-Hungarian Empire and the entire Spanish Empire. 
Wow. They're like the most prestigious royal family in history, maybe. Tapas and schnitzel. That's Huge. Right. That's Delicious. big. And goulash, I guess. Every kind of sausage. You name it. <laughs> every kind of sausage. <laughs> Sorry, you tell me about family history? Yeah, we're in charge of every kind of sausage. You ever had a sausage? You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, it's on me. Yeah. <laughs> then these cunts came in and invented the sausage roll. Oh, then we needed them. Covering that up. Like Austria needed Hungary. <laughs> we needed pastry. <laughs> um, so I looked at I was like, what's happening? Because I know they're still alive, some of them. Yeah. I was like, what's happening to like the... Who's the main guy now, right? Who's the head of the household now? So I looked him up and he who's is... Who's the an, top dog? He's an Austrian <laughs> politician. <laughs> an Austrian he's a, politician. He's a politician in Austria and he also briefly hosted a game show. What was the game show? Some kind of fucking quiz show. I don't know. <laughs> well, you do the research. Don't check out know. what kind of game show. I, I don't know. D- 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 ideal or, or kind of deal. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Seal or a kind of deal? <laughs> Wir gewonnen de be a nine millionaire. <laughs> I have no idea. Sale of the but, century. But these people are all around the place. Like the king of Greece is still alive. The king of Greece is still alive. And the king of Albania still exists, but they're just like nominally the king of Albania. They're not. They're not like. They're not actually. There's no the crown. Yeah. You know, it's just like well, the kind of king of Albania. The like, there probably is a crown in a museum somewhere, but like they're not in the government. They don't get to touch it. They don't get to touch yeah. the crown whenever they want. They're just technically the king of Albania. They like they're like not having a stag do and being like, actually, mate, I'm gonna get you the crown of Albania <laughs> for you to wear as the buck. <laughs> you Good gotta luck. drink out of the crown of Albania. <laughs> So there's all these there's all these aristocratic noble families all over the UK. They're just and, and doing like whatever. Loads of the land in Scotland is owned by Scottish. Uh, Scottish aristocrats are actually slightly more powerful because they, really? they have a different legal system. Because of like Braveheart or some shit, they still have something. Kind of, yeah. Wow. Sure. Man, that's so. So they are posh, but they might not be rich. They might even not even have more than two sets of clothes and drive the same car for forty years. But they're very, they're much more posh. But and what, they'll be what invited even... to the Queen's birthday, and then they can join all these fancy clubs in London, whereas Wayne Rooney can't. So they weren't like Wayne Rooney is not meeting the Queen, whereas these guys are wearing the same clothes to the Queen's birthday every year. Yes, and driving like an Astra there. Yeah, and they have a special crest that's in a museum that they can <sighs> have put on a, a scroll, <laughs> rolling the other as you should. A scroll. Oh yeah, so there's loads of like the class system is like a kind of half existent, half non existent, like But it kind of seems like a pain in the ass yes. to be like that posh. Yes it is, yeah. But it doesn't ever seem very pleasant. Is it prohibitive? If it I think it's prohibitive if you're if you're struggling. Right. Because like there's enormous family pressure not to like fuck up the big house. But the big house is like like just imagine living in a house that was built three hundred years ago and like the heating It'd be bill, awful. The heating bill and the plumbing and the fucking yeah, everything's old. Just and the amount of money you're spending on candles. But also you absurd. got like, yeah. But this is it. But also you go like, oh, what, we could sell one of the old paintings, right, to pay for r- repairs. And you go, but that's a painting of your great grandfather, and it's like a crucial part of your wonderful lineage. And there's all this pressure. Just take a photo of the painting, chuck it on Instagram. Yeah, you still got the painting. They make money by renting out their art as well. Right. This seems like such a niche existence. They're out there. It's. They're out there. I mean, they live amongst us, man. You don't know. You're like the men in black. You yeah. don't even know that they're there. The That's aliens. Yeah, yeah, Just yeah. these weird Whereas, posh people controlling humanoid robots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas like, uh, if you're like the Duke of Westminster, you've got loads of fucking business to attend to, but also you're so rich you could just live in space. Live in space? Is that the, is that the best neighborhood now? Space is the best neighborhood. It's just so like, no neighbors, <laughs> no neighbors in space. <laughs> there are no oh, in, in space. No one can hear you scream. Oh man, <laughs> I hear it's a real, a real bastard to furnish space apartments. <laughs> Even Amazon Prime can't get there. No, uh, uh, <laughs> Amazon Mega Prime, <laughs> beam, beam, Amazon Optimus Prime. You need an alien to soar into space with your flat pack table. You still have to build it in space. Yeah, you're <laughs> trying to assemble this flat pack with an Allen key and zero gravity. You think it's easy to lose screws now? Oh man! Wait till they can fly into the endless void of space. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just, I just don't know if this bookshelf is really working with everything constantly <laughs> rotating in zero gravity. Yeah, it's hard to read the family histories. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Aristocrats in space. I'm the just ultimate. imagining like these leather-bound hardback people. Yeah, just yeah. wandering around. Oh man, I didn't, I didn't realize. Like, I thought posh was like you're really doing quite well. But it's a matter of perspective, right? So. Growing up on the island or like up north, yeah. you'd be like, even if you just had like a four by four car, you'd be like, oh, posh, you know. 
So I, four by four. Just a four by four car. Like, oh, you know. Jeez, look so at this like, guy. Four doors. Must be nice. Yeah, oh. Four people can enter and exit at the same time. Very, oh, in a rush, are you? <laughs> so it's a matter of perspective, right? So like, I thought that my school was posh. Right. And what it, was what was your what was your school? Was it a private school? Private school. Blazer. Yeah, yeah. Your achievements shit. embroidered on the jacket. Not quite. Ah. Not quite. But it was the poshest school on the Isle of Man. So the so the, the scale, nicest house on the worst block. Yeah, in a way, you know, it's a good school. Yeah, but we were the locals were always like, oh, you bloody posh fancy, you know, fucking going to the nice place. Yeah, well, and so then when I went to when I moved to England. In my head, I was like, oh, my school was posh. And then I met actual, like, southern English posh people. Like, Downton Abbey types. And right. Like, so it's the oh, southern... I'm scum. I'm just fancy scum. <laughs> give, give, me, give me some geography on the, on the poshness. Because, like, is it not home, up north? They call it home counties. Home counties. The home counties are all the counties around London in a circle. Oxfordshire, uh, okay. Kent... All right, I got you. Sorry. So that big, that big, like not the Greater London, just beyond Greater London. Yeah, a so ring that around that it. concentric circle. That's that's a fancy pants circle. Okay, yeah. I got you. This is this has been very informative. Every bit of the UK has a posh bit, but Northern posh is different to Southern posh. Like, as in, they've got like a different history. Like, their family is kind of from a different area. There is a different history, but also like the standards aren't as high. Whereas, if you can imagine that, if you're like London posh. Then you're competing with, like I say, this Duke of Westminster guy who's worth like 30 billion. So you've got to be so, that much posher. Yeah, or posher or richer or more powerful. And London is where you have all the diplomats and the Saudi people visiting and whatever. Whereas up north, it's like, I've met really posh people from far up north and they tend to be like very posh, but their job or their life is still the life of like quite a rugged farmer. <laughs> Right, so it's like literally farm. Rolling, like, yeah, farms. They're big, big farms they manage or rent out to other farmers. Weird. Yeah, man, it's super weird. The, the, I mean, I guess Australia's got like old money farms. Like, yeah. a lot of like quite rich people come from farming yeah. and they go to like the prestigious universities in Sydney and then they stay at the prestigious college. Yes. And they just go back with an agriculture degree. That's and like exactly. a Did couple of stories they hope never come out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's their life. That's it. That, you, you've, you fucking nailed it. That's exactly what it is. Wow. That's why when, when, when Prince William went to Cambridge, it was to do a one-year agriculture farm management master's Wait, so thing. Prince William knows about soil. Oh, yeah. But why? Like, what, what they have loads point of in his life is he planting something? No, he's, he's paying people to plant things. That's what I mean. But, like, surely just employ some guy who knows about agriculture. Uh, he's got to know. He's got to know. So, and they serve in the military as well. That was the other thing yeah, that they, I remember. They have to go to the military, but then sometimes they fuck up. Like Prince Edward fucked up. What did he do? He he couldn't. He crashed out of Marines basic training, and Prince Philip shouted at him loads in private. Apparently, <laughs> I read I read this in a book. It's so weird that you guys like know this. About well, see, your I, people. I'm a Republican. I think we should get rid of the monarchy. Um, and I used to be quite in favor of them. Right, and then now you're just like, well, this is ridiculous. We should do it's, something else. I'd sound, it might sound weird, but it seemed less insane on the Isle of Man. Because the mean, scale's really small. I think so. Like, because you, you're more distant from it. Whereas here, you're like, what are they even doing? Well, because I moved to London, I lived in like a really shit flat in a poor area. Name and, then and I saw shame it. Bounds Green, man. Bounds Green, never heard yeah, of it. Exactly. What line? Piccadilly. Piccadilly. It's a good sweet, line. Sweet, sweet line. <laughs> uh, and then I saw Buckingham <laughs> Palace and I was like, oh, it's real. <laughs> That's insane. It isn't just a decorative plate. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then you sort of look at this huge palace with guards outside and you go, this is like Game of Thrones come to life. and. But I mean, like the the sheer amount of money the royal family brings in through like... There's no proof. There's no proof of that. That's all no. wild speculation. Like the we're, Jews did 9-11. Like that, <laughs> that kind of level. What like brings in how? Uh, just through tourism. What do you mean by that? Man, like I... look, The, queen, I, the queen's not at Heathrow Airport shaking hands. Well, she bloody... She's old, mate. She just needs a little <laughs> lie down. The old queen <laughs> needs to have a lie down. Uh, no, but... When I, I hosted this like Australian sports day, right? It was sure. like drinks all day, yeah. bands, yeah. sport. There was rugby, there was rugby league, there was sure. dodgeball. And everyone was like, hey, can you guys show the royal wedding? Yeah. Like these are just Australian people. But how like, did that make us any money? But like Australian people who have no interest outside drinking and fingering are like, can you please show us the royal wedding in the middle of the day and we'll sit quietly and watch it. So I'm like, there's, there's some weird value to the royal family. I don't get What's it. What's that value? It, it must be like TV rights, like they're selling some sponsorships nope, in the middle. It's illegal. 
What do you mean? They it's can't be sponsored. For, wait, you the think Queen, you, brought you, you to you think, by... By Gatorade? Yeah. You think the head of state is allowed to enter into a commercial deal? I, f- I fucking hope so. Oh, like, man. what's that's she, like, what's she like doing the, otherwise? The defense minister, sponsored by BAE Systems. Like, no, that's corruption. They're like the royal family. I guess they got power, don't they? They got that weird power thing they still have. They still appoint the governor general in Australia. Of course they do. They got to they sign off on it. Uh-huh. That'd be so weird. Yeah. Imagine being like, yeah, the queen just doesn't think that you're right for the job. That happened once in Australia. It did. I was, I was there. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I was so was not like alive. In the 70s, right? I was, I was <clears throat> cum at that stage. Uh, Maybe not even. No, probably not even cum. I was an egg, but not cum. You were, yeah. The egg was in there. Yeah. I'm glad that we're bringing science into this episode. Finally. The lady part of you was there. The lady part of me, which is a dominant part. That's right. Um, you're a sensual. I am. Feminine man. And I don't get paid very much. I'm very feminine. <laughs> That's my thing. <laughs> People uh, harass you on buses. Oh, man. I did not realize the posh thing here was just so... There's, there's layers to it, man. Just like... It, it, it seems like it's completely it, outside of reality. But it depends who you ask. Right. So if you ask someone on the Isle of Man if I'm posh, they go, oh, yeah. Whereas if you ask a posh person if I'm posh, they're like, what, the fucking guy whose parents actually had to work for a living? Yeah, but that but that kind of posh thing, like, from the Isle of Man, it seems like the posh thing is like the Australian posh thing. It's like, are you doing okay yeah. and educated? But remember that, like, so there's a quote from a guy who's in the House of Lords. Also, remember, we have a House of Lords. We don't vote for our upper house. Yeah, I know, because they're lords. Yeah. They deserve to be there. <laughs> but so there's a quote from one of the really hereditary lords. The hereditary lords. lords. Yeah, well, the, 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 literally, as in they've just inherited it. Some people have male patent boardness. Some people have male patent lordship. Yeah. That's great. But he's just inherited their place in the government. Yeah. And his quote is, uh, he was talking about how another lord wasn't actually very posh, right? You know, he's kind of he, was, being, he was snitching on this other lord. He was saying like he's not very fancy. I've seen this guy pick something up that he dropped once. This he, guy's no good. No, he said uh, he's from the sort of family that has to buy their furniture. <laughs> you can't be serious. Yeah. Like he has to buy it. Wouldn't you want modern furniture? When you have 300 year old mahogany. Yeah. It's, antique. It sounds like, incredibly uncomfortable. No. I, would, I wouldn't ever be like asking a posh person like, hey man, can I crash on your couch? <laughs> Like, that sounds awful. Unless I got like a bad can I, back. Can I crash on your wooden sailing ship? Yeah, I got like a bad back. Excuse me. Can I just like lay out on your couch for a bit, straighten things out? Four poster beds, mate. They'll they, they let you crash in their, one of their hundreds of rooms. But that's that's the level we're talking here. So this is about perspective as well. But like, posh, like being posh here seems to be like, yeah, SMS is a fad. You know what's really good? Writing letters by hand. Yeah. Like it just seems as outdated outside of the modern. Oh, totally. Yeah. I don't, I'm not. Uh... But like how, how often does like. How often do you even encounter it like here? Because I, I have no experience with it. I mean, well, they, coming here, the level of money yeah. in the UK is like crazy to me. Because like, I've never seen such a gap. Yes, like, the gap is, is the biggest it's been for a long time. That has blown my mind. Because like one thing that I did not it, realize... It didn't even used to be such a big gap 15 years ago. Right. So that's, it's, it's that's a last, modern... It's since the recession. It's really gone crazy. Because like, look, so correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. Being a bartender here, you're getting like six pounds an hour. Uh, maybe eight. Maybe eight. It's like six to eight pounds an hour. And tips. Yeah. But probably not many if you're a dude. Well, and look, no one tips in the UK, so. I'm, I'm, ve- I'm very charming. I'll uh, well, sort those tips out. I would, I would only get significant tips if I worked as a barman, if I worked in the one like gay bear bar in the UK. You would whatever. get so many tips as a bear. Yeah. Like for just anyone who wants more of a visual on PR, I figured this out yesterday. He looks like Zangief of Street Fighter. No, like that giant, just this giant Russian wrestler with this like V of chest hair, just like this terrifying, terrifying bear of a man. If Pierre and I walked down the street holding hands, like everyone would be like, that's a bear and that's a twink. Like done. Or would you, would you be a twink? I'm pretty twinkish. You got a mustache though. I got the mustache, yeah, but that's okay. That's all right. Like twinks, twinks can be pretty different now. You're an otter. An otter. Yeah. Is that a gay position? It's a hairy twink. A hairy twink, yeah. really? Yeah. Well, there you go. There you you know, know a lot about a lot of things. I know. I, I yeah. It's all I do. Pierre can just constantly pivot. Yeah. So this is about posh people, and you know, a hotter, an hotter, <laughs> a hairy twink. They're the same. And the posh people are like, "What?" And he's like, "Oh, sorry." And then he no, just no, keeps no. talking to gay people about being posh, and they're like, "This is very interesting. <laughs> we are fascinated as a group." No, yeah. like I, that's the thing that I can't get over because like the the wages here are like very low. Yeah. But everything's very expensive. Yeah. But. Then there's these rich people who are like, for everything must just be so cheap. Yes. Yeah, yeah, Like, yeah. I, I, I don't understand. Like, I think Australia does like a, not a great job, but like a pretty good job. Oh, astonishing. For, like, for UK listeners, like when I went to Australia, 
like the 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 barmen are getting on Sundays, like the barmen are getting like thirty quid an hour. Well, not not quite thirty quid. Like probably in tw- like low twenties. Still, that's a, that, that, like, I know that's insane that's for an here. Incredible because like time and a half, and like public holidays, you get double time and a half. So like on a normal day, a, a, a barman in Australia is getting what like fifteen quid. Like twenty twenty one dollars. So Fuck. like yeah, like fourteen quid. I reckon fourteen quid that. an hour. So it's almost double. Yeah, uh, that's that's what I mean. Like double. Yeah. And then you just other things like with other jobs, it seems that you kind of get roughly half what you earn in Australia. Like, let's say like yes. a nine to five, like a proper graduate position. Yeah. You're earning like, let's say 40,000, like 30 to 40,000 pounds. That seems to be like a regular kind of few years Ooh. in the industry. Yeah, if you've been there for a few years. Yeah, yeah. a few years in the industry job. Your starting you know, salary will be like 24. Yeah, I'm, I'm coming at this from a, you know, I'm, I'm 29. Yeah. So most people I know have been out of uni for yes. like five yeah, years, yeah. let's say. And so that, that kind of level, whereas in Australia, you're probably getting like 80,000. Jesus Christ. When you're at that, Level eighty thousand dollars, so like fifty thousand like, pounds. That's still that. That's yeah, fucking hell, man. But like these, these are your corporate jobs and stuff. And like obviously, lawyers in Australia are getting like much more. Whereas sure. like my friend who is a lawyer here earns way more than he'd earn in Australia because London firms are competing with New York firms. Oh yeah, and New York firms buy the talent. Yes. So and it's just how does this all fit together? Like how do all these people <laughs> live in London, fucking next to each other? Like, I don't understand it. Like, everyone's on the same bus. Uh, council housing? Council housing. Uh, so, when London was rebuilt after the war, yeah. they deliberately designed it. Their, their idea, their philosophical idea, was that every little area of London would be like a village. They decided the ideal way of living was like in an English village. So Which, say, obviously, it is, because that just produces weird people who yeah. drink cider and... Well, this is in the 40s. Fuck the so. same people they spend Christmas with. Exactly. What a great time. Utopia. Ah. So basically, I mean, it is beautiful. The reason they said it was good was that in an English village, right, if you go to the pub, in the pub is the farmer, right, the plumber, the unemployed guy, the doctor, the lawyer, the, the local aristocrat, squire. Like, they're all in the same bar. All the different jobs are in the same village. Yes. Yeah. But in the same pub, they socialize together. It creates uh, unity. It creates empathy. I like that you guys have picked the pub as, like, the model. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas you're going to pubs now and sitting at the back quietly, yeah. even though your team's playing, because the women terrify you. Oh, yeah. I don't want to get involved in that. That's that's what we want. We want more pub well, culture. Wasn't it? it was a bar, I'd say, rather than it was a, a pub. Oh, yeah. Well, look, that's, that's an important distinction here. It's I know you think it might not be. Bars. Um, yeah, so, so that's what they designed. So that's why, like... There's there's a massive council estate of like government housing near Buckingham Palace. Deliberately. That's very strange. It's designed like that. So like you know I mean I you know like how, it. Oh, it's a good idea. You know Kensington yeah. is super fancy? Yeah, Kensington is super fancy. Yeah, I've been North there. Kensington is not. North Kensington has produced like 10 ISIS fighters. Really? And there's and gangs and there's violence and cuz North Kensington is full of ca- council estates. Right. So it's there's really a lot rough. of deprivation around North but Kensington. But in all of Kensington there's yeah. like this that's where Grenfell was, Kensington and Chelsea. Really? Grenfell's in Chelsea. Grenfell, the, the, terrible, fire, fire, the terrible fire about a building that was just not even near regulations yes. in terms of construction. Yep. Like That's it, northern Kensington and Chelsea, like borough council. In, in one of the fanciest parts of London. Yes, and that's what made it more outrageous, yeah. Oh, man. So, like, it's a, that's why they're all on the same bus, as you say. Yeah. And also, like, loads of the people who we're talking about who earn these low wages, they live out in zone four or five, like I used to, in fucking horrible account housing with like nine other Bulgarian dudes. But then like you have people who live in like the Cotswolds yes. and Somerset mm-hmm. and like commute in mm-hmm. people every commu- day. Pe- apparently people commuting from the Isle of Wight. How far is the Isle of Wight? Their commute starts with a ferry. <laughs> it's a 20 minute ferry. And then you're in, uh, I think it's Southampton. And that's from Southampton. So that's like a two-hour train. Wow. I mean, anytime you're on a ferry. I mean, well, Sydney, Sydney's a bit London, different. That's because London wages are like... 50, so much 50, higher. 50, another 50% higher sometimes. Wow. Like hugely higher. So it's just like, it's still worth it, even mm. if you include the commute. I mean, yeah, I did a, I did a gig in Belgium. Mm. And I caught the bus. Because, again, that's what you do. Yep. When you're new to a place, you get that bus. You get that sweet bus. And the greatest moment was when the bus went inside a ferry like slash train thing yeah. to get across the channel. <laughs> right. And like when your means of transport is inside another means of transport, you probably booked the wrong ticket. You know, <laughs> it's just like if you're in a car on a plane, you'd be like, yeah, I fucked up. Yeah. I should not be here. <laughs> like, oh man. But yeah, it's like, I, I can't, I can't get over like the wealth disparity, but like, I mean, I agree. The, like the, the fact that the UK is like the seventh richest country in the world and it's full of food banks. Yeah. And just like, 
I I just find it interesting because like in Sydney, yeah, where we did have kind of government housing yeah. amongst all the stuff. Like there's actually this very famous thing like right at Sydney Harbour, like next to the Harbour Bridge. Yeah. These like really like architecturally like significant buildings yeah. and they're all government housing. Yeah, 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 and yeah. now they're just kicking everybody out because Sydney is ruthless. They're just like, hey, we can actually sell this to uh, foreign investors for yeah. shitloads of money. You see, that started to happen here in London as well. Ah, uh, that's so starting like, to kick off. That diversity of, of, like you say, they're all on the same bus is going away especially because in the 80s margaret thatcher invented a thing called right to buy which is if you lived in your council house long enough and paid council rent for long enough you could qualify to purchase your council house right so, so then the government you, doesn't own it anymore yeah. so then you can sell it and so the housing stock money. the stock of government housing is now like super they, they low. need to build like quarter of a million new houses a year and they build like ten thousand. is it that that it's, it's the like demand a, is that high so what do people huge. just move out do people just leave London? Is that the... That's how it does happen, yeah. So like they're, they're saying that there's an, an element of cleansing to it. And if we're not careful, we're going to end up like Paris, which has like... The center of Paris is like empty except for oligarchs. And then <laughs> the ring around Paris, like Guerre du Nord and stuff, is, yeah, just, yeah, is yeah. just like mad fucking just, deprivation. Yeah, because like that's what... There's all the different like an districts in it. Like an you. American city. The center is empty and nice. Yeah. And the outskirts is... It's mad. It's full of terrifying people. Yes. Yeah, lovely. I mean, cleansing is never a word that's a nice thing to throw around. We so, prefer gentrification now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cleansing is never... The gentrification of the word cleansing is actually to call it gentrification. <laughs> that's, that's how it's worked. But I mean, I, I kind of... I like that there is that system kind of set up here. But yeah. yeah, clearly it seems like it's but then if you're collapsing. Earn, yeah. Well, if you're earning the wages like with the, that we're talking about outside of London, you can do all right. Like you could buy a house in Manchester. Yeah, I looked up Swansea housing prices <laughs> and apparently they're just giving them away. No, uh, but, A high five. Yeah, it's just like, look, if, you're, if you just promise to be here for at least three years, we'll, we'll have you. <laughs> you don't have to learn any Welsh. It's, it's, uh, it's okay. Yeah. Oh man, I, I, that's actually one thing that just like, kind of emphasize because Australia is like quite a rich country as we're saying yeah. like we get well, it's, paid it's more a very flat society yeah we get we get paid more yeah. um in like different jobs like at university you can totally support yourself which yeah. over here that seems virtually impossible it's it's harder much harder yeah 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 i like to have a kind of bar job that just sorts you out for your accommodation and yeah oh yeah all no, that kind of stuff no no i, I, I think it's sitting that's totally achievable like everyone in australia is very achievable um but yeah it's just one thing that i think like encapsulates like the difference is yeah. like i have never ever 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 anywhere in australia heard anyone use the word oligarch not once <laughs> like no one has ever said that word there's never been a necessary thing like i like i'm aware of australian billionaires like yeah. i i know like an australian that, billionaire like that mining lady yeah gina reinhardt yeah. um but yeah like i i have um a family friend who throughout my lifetime has become a billionaire mm. which is a weird thing to encounter because whenever that person has given you money in the past, you look back on that and think, what a tight motherfucker, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you're really like, man, that guy really could have given me more than 10 bucks, you know? Like, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, but at, at no point would you ever say oligarch, you know? You'd no. just be like, that's a billionaire, that's a very rich person. Well, an oligarch is a very special type of billionaire. Well, please explain to me the exact definition of an oligarch. I, oh, exact? I don't know, but like, it's the, it's the Russians, basically. It's used to refer to mostly to the Russians and Ukrainians. How, how come they got to... Got to uh, take that one because they privatized in the in the 90s when Russia went all capitalist. Yeah, they privatized. I heard about that. It was yeah. a little little ditty. Little, little thing. They David were. Hasselhoff uh, yeah. reunited Germany. <laughs> Germany with his chest hair. Oh man, what wove, a wove them together. That's a that's a great moment in anyone's life. I think Hasselhoff saving your country. Yeah, <laughs> like you're a drowning a person at a beach. <laughs> So like, look, we weren't really sure until Hasselhoff dragged us out of the water and revived us. Then we knew communism was dead. That's it. When David told us. Yeah, it's because no one wants to share David Hasselhoff. That's, That's why <laughs> he brought down the wall. So there's like, uh, if you privatize, if you're in Russia and you privatize stuff that used to be Soviet entirely government controlled, like all the world's aluminium supplies. Good. Um, and now suddenly it's up for auction. And you form a conglomerate, uh, and I'm sure you don't at any point need to whack anyone or, or get loads of, of dodgy, dodgy that'd, loans to that'd afford be to do That'd be weird. This. That'd be crazy. And so these guys are like overnight billionaires because suddenly they control three of the world's biggest platinum mines or aluminium mines or right. Whatever. So that's coal, oil, gas. 
Is that is that Roman Abramovich, the guy who owns yeah. Chelsea? Is that like yeah. his Chelsea he's, FC? He's, not not the suburb of Chelsea. I don't yeah. think anyone owns that except some fucking duke. The Russians. Like, yeah, there we go. Chel- Chelsky. Chelsky. Say. Oh, is that a thing? Yeah. Ah. Um, Roman Abramovich is an oligarch, but he's buddies with Putin. Okay. He's a bit matey with him. Is that... Apparently. Is that like a common... Like, well, they're buddies until he doesn't like you anymore. A lot of the oligarchs like Berezovsky and stuff in the UK fled Putin because he started chucking them in jail. Really? Yeah, so yeah, he's yeah, like, yeah. Oh, I don't like this anymore. Mm-hmm. I, want, I want my stuff back. Yeah, but not with all of them, just for some of them. Just for some. Yeah. Wow. And the Russia's about to host the goddamn World Cup. Yeah. That's all, that's all happening. I'm oh, sure yeah. Putin had nothing to do with that. I'm sure his influence was minimal. That's right. That was my chat with Pierre. Uh, thank you for listening. I hope you guys now understand the class system slightly better than you did before and are vaguely impressed by the wages people make in Australia. That's why you guys get to come across, man. That's why you guys hit it up. It's not just for the beaches. We do pay quite generously, but don't worry. Everything costs fucking heaps. So it bounces out in the end. Uh, I'll be back on Monday with another episode. If you want to catch me live, there's another Australian Comedians Dope Comedy in London on February 3rd with a really, really cool lineup of Ray Badron, Danielle Walker, and Bonnie Tangi. Uh, That's happening February 3rd. And after that, I'm at Leicester. You know anyone in Leicester? I certainly don't. I've only been there once. I did a comedy show in an adult learning center opening for Shooter Williamson, and it was an incredibly bizarre experience you hear that that's how you know this episode was recorded overseas a bloody foreign ambulance siren anyway leicester comedy festival i'm there february 10th at brew dog get a pizza come check out some comedy it's a pay what you want show and i'll be doing some brand new jokes if you know anyone in leicester please do send them along otherwise i'll catch you guys next week keep wrapping your ears around the union jack off it's a goddamn pleasure i'm daniel muggleton chat to you soon bye (laughs) 